Hi, I'm Lindsay Purcell, Urban Forestry Specialist at Purdue University in the Department of Forestry and Natural Resources. And for my segment, I'm going to talk about how to identify defects in trees. So I want to first start out with the fact that trees provide many benefits to our landscapes and to our communities and to the world as, as a whole. They provide shade, they sequester carbon, they filter pollution, they clean air, clean water, they do a lot of things. But they do pose a risk in the landscape. And it's important for every tree owner and tree manager to be able to identify defects and know what to do with them after you find them. So I'm gonna start out with this small tree. Now this could be a tree of any size, but it's kind of a good scale right now because we can see the entire tree and look at some specific defects. So what this is called is visual tree, visual tree analysis. And what we're going to do is look at the tree from three different areas in particular. We're going to read the body language of the tree. First of all, we're going to look at the root system and the, basically the root plate, which is anywhere under the drip line. What we want to look for primarily is anything out of the ordinary. That could be uh, mushrooms or fruiting bodies. It could be um, roots that are exposed perhaps from a wind event or a storm. Um, it could be any type of damage to the root system from construction or something like that. Because if there's something going on with the root system, that's going to affect the stability of the tree overall. Now once we look at the root system, we're going to start moving up to the trunk to see if there's any kind of issues with the trunk. Now remember, this could be a 20 inch tree or this 7 inch tree, but it's still the same. So obviously this has some serious issues with defect and decay. You can see the decay areas in the bottom of the trunk here and then also at this branch union. So that's certainly something to be uh, concerned about. And the bigger the tree then the more important these defects become because they have a higher likelihood of failure. Now after we look at the trunk we want to look at the canopy. What we want to look at to see if there's been a storm, we may want to come out to see if there's any broken or hanging branches that could fall later. Um, we also want to look to see if there's any crossing branches or perhaps any diseased or a tree that's uh, been impacted by insects in, uh, or something like that. Also, we want to look at branch structure to see if there's any co-dominant stems or poor branch attachments that could cause failure. One of the most important things for a tree owner or a tree manager to consider is tree inspections and they should be done on a regular basis. If you have a storm event, it's a good idea to go out and check out your trees on your landscape or on your property to see if there's any kind of damage that needs to be mitigated. Also, on a regular basis, it's a good idea to inspect your trees every three to five years. Also document those inspections because those could come in handy later on. So, in order to have a uh, risk situation with a tree, you've got to have two things. First of all, you've got to have a defect, which we just talked about earlier, but you also need to have a target. And the target could be people, property, or disruption of activities. So when I'm talking about that, we're actually looking at all three in this particular location. So we have a tree with a some large dead branches in it that are overhanging this sidewalk or this walking trail. The walking trail is a target because there's people on this trail and should that tree fail or that part fail, that could injure somebody if they're walking on, on, the, on the walking trail. But also it could disrupt activities. For example, if that dead limb was over a road, if it failed, it could block traffic. So in order to have a risk situation, you gotta have that combination of defect and a target. So the best thing to do is, again, inspect the tree for dead branches and look for things that you can do to improve or reduce that risk and reduce that likelihood of failure. Now, in order to do this, there's a couple of different things you can do. First. A lot of times pruning can take care of that. Or it may need cabling or bracing in the case of uh, weak branch attachments. Or just improving environmental conditions. It may be prolonged wetness that's causing perhaps the roots to potentially fail. And by just improving the drainage can make a difference. But last and certainly least is the decision to remove that tree. And that needs to be an informed decision. And that's the key thing, is knowing when to stay in your lane, basically. 
So it's important to know when to call a qualified arborist or an ISA certified arborist to get some more information on tree risk so that you're making the best decision for your tree and your landscape. So once you remove that tree, there's really zero risk, but you also lose those benefits that that tree provides in your landscape. All right, as I mentioned earlier, Pruning can take care or mitigate a lot of risk in the landscape. For example, you see this larger dead limb here, which is about two to three inches. If it failed, it could really cause some injury or some damage. You know, this is an area where people picnic and, and rest and relax. But again, it threatens the target, which is an issue that needs to be taken care of. So again, just some simple pruning here, proper pruning at the, at the stem will help. What if you can't do that or don't have the tools or the knowledge or ability to do that? Well, this is where you call an ISA certified arborist. Where do you find them and how do you know where to look for them? Well, one of the best resources that we have available is going to a website, www.treesaregood.org. And there's a link there that says find an arborist. You enter in your zip code and it tells you all the certified arborists within your area that can help you with tree risk assessment and tree risk management in your landscape. All trees pose some sort of risk. They are living organisms that are endangered by the environment or pests. And one of the things we need to be aware of is there's not always immediate risk, but that inspection every three to five years is due diligence on your property or landscape that you manage or own. For example, the tree behind me here is a hickory tree that's been impacted by construction. Now it's got some dying and, or dieback in the top, and it's not posing an immediate risk now, but that's something we want to, what we call retain and monitor and check out every three to five years to make sure it's not getting any worse. Or if it is worsening, we need to mitigate with either pruning or consider removal later on. So one of the things that you can do for your client is check out their trees for any type of risk situation. So this is a normal tree on a normal landscape and oftentimes landscape professionals and horticulturalists don't look at anything other than the ground plane plants or perhaps the understory plants, but trees are a part of the landscape too. And this is one service that you can provide for your client that will really make a difference in their overall tree risk management, also their overall safety on the site. So if we look at this tree, the things I would direct you to look at would be again, start with the root system and work your way up through the trunk, the branches and the canopy. For example, this one has some girdling roots and also some exposed roots. Uh, due to erosion or perhaps pedestrian traffic. Um, otherwise, there's really nothing there that indicates any kind of problem. So I would think about uh, perhaps uh, lifting roots or something like that, or fruiting bodies for mushrooms. So another thing I would look at again is a trunk. Uh, this has a very low uh, branching habit, which is a high crown ratio. Um, but uh, one thing that's really of note is uh, this decay cavity here, um, which has obviously been present for a long time. Um, also some old pruning wounds or perhaps some storm damage. Uh, but you can see that there is some healing going on here uh, with some wound wood development, um, which is a positive indicator that it's recovering from those wounds and may remain stable for a very long time. Another consideration up in the canopy is the co-dominant stems or co-dominant branching, um, which tends to be a weak branch attachment. So one of the things I would look for is to see if there's any included bark um, or bulging bark that's coming out the sides of the stems, because um, those are also uh, have a higher likelihood of failure. Uh, another thing I might look at is this overextended branch. Let's say this branch weighs a thousand pounds and it's 20 feet long. That's 20,000 foot pounds of torque on this branch attachment. So that's a lot of weight. So we wanna make sure that those branch attachments are on that tree, that very stable and very sound. The other things I would look at again to see if there's any dead or dying or broken limbs. There's a couple of dead limbs that are actually detached that could fall out and hit somebody in the head or, or a passerby, a vehicle or pedestrian. So. Um, also, there's some decay pockets in some of the branches up here. So again, what you want to do is look for that higher likelihood of failure or a probable likelihood of failure that could impact your client's site or the people in or around that tree. 
The idea is to keep a safe landscape from basically from turf to tree and inspecting those trees are an important part of your services. Individual tree characteristics should be considered when conducting evaluations for defects and potential failure. Examination of each section of the tree. A systematic approach using standardized evaluation methods aids the process. Review the canopy, the branches, and the root zone to check for signs of failure.